Welcome to Now in Android, episode 25. First of all, Android 11 is finally out. Uh, I've been talking about this for a while, so not a lot of new news here, but it's kind of nice to have it stabilized and out in the real world. Also, source code, best part of Android, is now on AOSP, so you can check out the code as well as the bits. Uh, as well as develop your apps around uh, the behavior of the release. So I have mentioned a lot of the things in the release already, but just for sort of teasers about some of the stuff you can see in the release from the developer as well as the user point of view. UI improvements, including conversations and notification panels, bubbles, and my favorite feature, synchronized IME animations, easy access to controls for both connected devices as well as media applications and capability, privacy enhancements like one-time and auto-reset permissions, scope storage improvements, background location, and biometric strength APIs, including adding capabilities to the Jetpack biometric uh, library for earlier releases, and developer enhancements like new crash reasons, API behavior toggling in the developer options, UI, ADB incremental installation uh, for those really huge APKs, and more Kotlin nullability annotations in the platform APIs. Uh, we also added more modules to the Google Play system updates. Now, if that term doesn't mean anything to you, it didn't mean anything to me either. When we first talked about this capability, we called it mainline, but the official product name uh, for it is Google Play System Update. So we added a bunch more uh, modules, so now we can support more of the core OS functionality and basically make it easier to update core platform functionality across the ecosystem. If you want to know all of the developer features, or at least more that I have time to talk about now, uh, as well as more of the user features, first of all, check out Stephanie Cuthbertson's blog on the developer features and Dave Burke's blog on the user features for Android 11. Jetpack Data Store, new library out there basically to replace whatever you're using shared preferences for. Uh, it is currently in alpha. The alpha 01 release just came out on the Android X site. Um, so make up your own mind whether it's uh, actually stable enough for you right now. But do check it out. It is the way forward. It uses Kotlin coroutines and flow for easier asynchronous reads and writes. So before, if you wanted to write something, well, please don't do it on the UI thread. And then it was up to you how to sort of manage that capability. Now you can just write from wherever and it will shuffle uh, onto the right thread appropriately using the magic of coroutines and flow. There are actually two different APIs in Data Store to be aware of. One is called Preferences Data Store, and that is essentially a one-for-one -one replacement or functionality replacement for shared preferences, although, as I said, it allows uh, much better, more robust, and easier uh, asynchronous reads and writes capability. Um, but uh, that is basically the equivalent of shared preferences because it's key value pairs, right? No type safety going on in there. You just store it, you give it a string, and you give it a primitive value, and away you go. But there's a second API to be aware of called Proto Data Store, and this allows you to create a schema that you can then use uh, to define richer uh, objects to store and uh, type safe objects. Um, so a little bit more powerful, a little bit more ramp up to use, um, not quite as you know sort of plug and play as the key value. Um, but if you need something more, that something more is in there for you. There are two code labs that we came out with to help you learn, get up to speed on this thing, as well as uh, an article on the Android developers blog uh, describing more about Data Store. And you can download the library and start playing with it today. Uh, a couple of articles worth knowing about. One is uh, Adapting to Recent Android Privacy Changes by Fred Chung. Uh, talked about some of the recent privacy changes in recent releases, as well as Android 11, and how developers can spin up on these things and adjust to them in your applications. Uh, many of the changes are actually gated in Android 11 behind a target SDK flag, which means maybe they won't affect you yet but they will at some point, so it's good to know what's going on. Uh, the, the article covers four areas in particular, where one is package access. So in Android 11, applications no longer have access to information about all of the other applications installed on a device. So then what are you supposed to do about it if you need that information? Uh, how do you work with that constraint? Um, there's also a link to an implementation guide uh, to give you more information about that. Uh, incremental location permissions in Android 11, 
uh, we now require you to first get the permission for foreground location and then get the permission for background location if you also need that. And then that takes the user to the settings dialog, uh, the settings panel, where they can see it's about data transparency. They can see what's going on in the system and make the appropriate decision for their situation. Uh, and this gives you more information about how that works and how to work with it. Uh, foreground services, uh, if you need this for location, microphone, and camera access, is more information in there about that. And finally, non-resettable IDs. This has been an evolving um, feature constraint in recent releases, including Android 11, where we really want to migrate developers away from non-resettable IDs because that is uh, not uh, the way to go for user devices. We understand why you're using it. However, uh, we really need people to be using resettable IDs instead. Um, in Android 11, there was a change for uh, the method get ICC ID. Uh, used to return information uh, that was specific to that device, and it no longer does. Um, so again, you'll need to migrate. Uh, there's a link to the guide called Best Practices for Unique Identifiers. You should check that out um, and figure out how to migrate your own app and code to use resettable identifiers instead. Android GPU Inspector is a tool that we announced a while ago, but it was open only for a, a closed a sort of pre-beta release as we were continued to uh, work on it. Well, we have continued to work on it, and now there is an open beta. So you can sign up for this. You can download the bits directly. You can send us feedback. Um, this tool is similar to other profiling tools that we have, sort of time-based information about what's going on in the system, things like CPU Inspector and Android Studio, as well as the standalone tools SysTrace and Perfetto. Uh, the difference here is that it has low-level information about what's going on in the GPU. Uh, and this is really important for game developers and other developers that really need access to performance-sensitive information uh, for 3D graphics operations that are happening on the device. So uh, the GPU inspector, uh, Android GPU inspector, only works on certain devices now because we need to cooperate with information that's coming from the drivers. So right now it's limited to Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL, but we're working with other manufacturers and devices to make sure that it's expanded to be uh, usable on other devices going forward. You can download the tool. You can check out the article and the video that are linked uh, in uh, now in Android in the article version as usual. And then finally, there's a couple of podcast episodes that I think are worth checking out. First, uh, Android Developers Backstage, episode 148. Sean McQuillan and I sat down with Nicola Rohrd and uh, John Hofford and talked about Motion Editor. Well, that was the main topic, except we also talked about Constraint Editor. We talked about, uh, uh, sorry, Constraint Layouts, which uh, Motion Layout is a subclass of, so they sort of work really closely together. We talked about some of the underlying concepts, difficulties of animating text properties, uh, some of the hard math that's going into the uh, what Motion Layout is actually doing. Um, so a really interesting conversation about some of the internals in both of these uh, layouts, as well as some of the other design tools that Android Studio offers. And then finally, there's an external podcast called Talking with Apples, uh, which is hosted by Peter John Welcome. And he welcomed Sean McQuillan to the show to talk about Jetpack Compose. So check that out for more information about Compose. Check out the Now in Android 25 article for links to everything that I talked about here and more. And finally, if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks. Thanks.